Reach for the sky, boy. The wild world of early 2000s independent wrestling. Over the top violence, scumbag promoters, and surprisingly, a lot of really great wrestling. One promotion that had a particularly strange and turbulent existence was one founded by an ECW original and his adult film actress girlfriend. This is Defunct Championship Wrestling, Episode 3 Propane Pro Wrestling 3PW. I talked a bit about the world of independent wrestling after the closures of WCW and ECW in my Ring of Honor video. There were so many promotions out there, it was an amazing time to be a fan. And the majority of them were based out of the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. One of these promotions that popped up in Philly in 2002 was starred by a local kid who'd made a name for himself, Brian Hefferin, the Blue Meanie. The Meanie grew up in South Philly and started going to ECW at the arena from the very beginning. Eventually, he would follow his dream and become a wrestler. A decision that would see him become a beloved character in ECW, and for two brief stints, a WWE superstar. But he wasn't alone in starting this company, as his girlfriend at the time would also come along for the ride. Jasmine St. Clair was an adult film actress who was mostly known at the time for, let's say, sharing the screen with several co-stars at once? The duo had appeared together in ECW's Dying Days, a time when the meanie had dropped a ton of weight, forcing Paul Heyman to ask, what do I do with a skinny meanie? Once ECW folded, meanie made the rounds on the indie scene. This is when the idea for 3PW started to take shape. Jasmine St. Clair had a friend who had been approached about investing in an independent promotion. He ran the idea by meanie and Jasmine when the meanie suggested it'd be wiser just to spend that money and start your own promotion. That's when it hit him he could start his own promotion. At the time, Philly wasn't as saturated with promotions as it would later become. CZW was running, but that was about it. Meanie saw an opportunity to start something new, so he and Jasmine decided to do just that. Jasmine would provide the funds and handle all the financials of the company, and Meanie would handle the promoting and be the face of the promotion. He'd also book their first show. In February 2002, Propane Pro Wrestling, 3PW for the initials, was born. Meanie has mentioned that starting the name with a number would place them at the top of any list of promotions. It's really a brilliant idea. Even if the full name, Propane Pro Wrestling, leads to some very dumb jokes by untalented hacks. Their first event featured many notable ECW alumni, like Steve Carino, Little Guido, The Sandman, and of course, the Blue Guy himself. They also brought in young and upcoming stars like Christian York and Joey Matthews, and for the first time ever in Philly, Colt Cabana and CM Punk. After the success of their first event, 3PW inaugural show, they decided to hit the ground running. They would bring in ECW founder Todd Gordon as the booker and started running monthly shows. 3PW would base itself out of the familiar surroundings of the ECW arena. They started to draw pretty good crowds right away. About a thousand fans came consistently early on. In early 2003, XPW made its way to the East Coast and entered into an exclusive deal with the ECW Arena to be the only wrestling allowed in the building. However, that deal wouldn't last more than a few months. Propane Pro Wrestling had lost its home temporarily, but no worry, they moved to the much cooler looking Electric Factory, featuring shows with legends like Dusty Rhodes, Kurt Henning, Bam Bam Bigelow, Sabu, Terry Funk, and even Jerry the King Lawler. They also continued to bring in some fresh faces, like Chris Hero, Slick Wagner Brown, The Hit Squad, Matt Stryker, and AJ Styles. By mid-2004, 3PW's shows were becoming can't-miss favorites among the indie internet wrestling fans. Their cards really did have something for everyone. They had hardcore for the former ECW fan, old-school pro wrestling for the former NWA fan, and technical showcases with the best new talent on the scene. They also had whatever you'd call Jasmine St. Clair's matches, and the usual softcore garbage of the time. I remember going right to DOIWrestling.com every Monday in high school to check the results of shows from that weekend and being blown away by the cards and results I'd see from 3PW. 
they were even featured in heavy rotation on the UK's wrestling channel. 3PW seemed to be a company on the rise. But all this growth came at a great cost. Bringing in the talent they were using was expensive. They weren't making a lot of money from the shows. In fact, Meanie wasn't making a dime from running events. He was keeping his bills paid by doing graphic design work for Jasmine. At the same time, Jasmine was making decisions for the company that were truly hindering further growth and worse yet, damaging Meanie's relationships with colleagues and friends. Jasmine's lack of communication to the talent often meant Meanie had to be the bad guy. Like telling Pitbull Gary Wolf he wasn't being booked anymore. Jasmine agreed to call him, but never did. So Meanie had to break the news when Pitbull walked into the building. For the Meanie, this was his life's work. All he wanted to do was be a wrestler. And now all he wanted to do was give other wrestlers somewhere to work, make a little money, give back to the business. And for Jasmine, 3PW was just something to add to her resume. It was a title. She got to play wrestling promoter. Towards the end of 2004, she even started to no-show her own events. There came a point in November of 2004 where Jasmine claimed to have been arrested for making prank phone calls. She let Meanie know the morning of the show that she was in jail and wouldn't be able to make the event. No Jasmine meant no money. Once Todd Gordon found out there was no money to pay the talent, he quit on the spot. Gordon had already butted heads with Jasmine when it came to the finances, but this was the final straw. Meanie spent all day prior to the show trying to get the money. Nothing arrived from Jasmine until the next morning. All the talent on the card that night, except for one person, agreed to stay and work off of whatever came through the door. Eventually, shows did have to start being cancelled. Most of the goodwill with the audience started to erode and people stopped coming. Their audience was shrinking. Fans were choosing their Philly competitors, ROH, Chikara, and CZW more and more. And that's excluding the New York and New Jersey promotions like Jersey All Pro that were accessible to their fan base. Things were unraveling for the upstart promotion. Something needed to be done to correct course. Enter Mike Hawes and Rich McDonald. Mike Hawes got his start in the UK scene on the production side of things through his friendship with the Dirt Bike Kid in the late 90s. Now if Dirt Bike Kid sounds familiar, it may be from this clip of Sasuke kicking his ass for a shoot. This relationship led to Haas being the handler for Sabu when he made UK trips as XPW champion. Eventually Haas found himself living in the US, based in California, working for XPW. After XPW moved to the East Coast and ultimately closed up for a few years, Haas was introduced to Blue Meanie and Jasmine St. Clair through a friend, Rich McDonald, who, depending on who you talk to, was either Jasmine's tax consultant or distributor for her films. I guess it's conceivable he may have been both. McDonald and Haas had seen potential for 3PW to come to the West Coast to replace the hole left by XPW's move and closure. They'd seen the earlier shows, full crowds, big names, and the kind of action that the XPW audience was accustomed to. The idea was floated of Mike and Rich coming on board to help out and have Rich's funds as a backup should Jasmine disappear again for any reason. And guess what? By February 2005, they needed some money. So for what I could decipher was the third anniversary show, Haas invested $5,000 to take care of the initial expenses. Mike had expected to be reimbursed by Jasmine. However, come show day, she was nowhere to be found, claiming to be stuck in the Dallas airport. This also meant all remaining expenses, paying the talent, production, crew, etc. weren't being covered. So, in a scramble to ensure the company could live on for at least one more show, Rich McDonald and the Meanie came to an agreement. Blue Meanie had created the company's name and logo. This gave him ownership of the intellectual property, not Jasmine. So, before bell time, after a fax and wiring some cash, McDonald had purchased the IP of Propane Pro Wrestling. By April, he was officially named CEO, squeezing out Jasmine with some concessions. Jasmine retained the rights to the promotion's footage prior to December of 2004 and would receive royalties from the company. Mike Hawes would be named general manager, overseeing the operations and day-to-day -day of the company. And over the course of a few months, McDonald would invest $25,000 into 3PW. The pair immediately got to work trying to stop the bleeding. They kept their core talents and added some newer faces like the future Corey Graves, Sterling James Keenan, but the days of Christopher Daniels, Sabu, Jerry Lawler, and AJ Styles as guests were over. 
Instead, to save costs, they entered into a formal agreement with TNA that used them as a booking agent for their talent, like Chris Sabin, Abyss, and James Storm. This was common for TNA at the time. It only lasted one event before things started to go completely to shit. Eventually, Jasmine's royalties started to dry up as money was running out. So, out of spite, she decided to auction off the promotion on eBay for $180,000. There were no bids. June 2005 would prove to be a crucial month for the company. The weekend of June 10th, the Blue Mini would appear on both Hardcore Homecoming and ECW One Night Stand. And of course, this happened. The very next weekend, 3PW held what would become their final show. Ironically enough, it was titled Resurrection. After this happened, to avoid legal action, WWE hired Meanie for a brief BWO reunion on SmackDown in July, where he'd eventually get a bit of revenge against JBL. Meanwhile, 3PW would cancel their July 16th event and even posted an article on their website urging fans to stick with them as they reshuffle for a September return. Then finally, in August of 2005, Mike Hawes announced the company was indeed closing. Immediately, fingers started to point at who was at fault. In his statement making the announcement, Mike Hawes cited numerous factors that led to 3PW shutting down, claiming being left in the dark and misled about the full state of the company's issues and the oversaturation and toxic environment of the East Coast indie scene as the primary problems. More importantly though, the money man Rich McDonald was going through some serious health issues, he felt his time was better spent getting healthy than trying to keep 3PW up and running, so he stopped funding it. Also according to Mike at the time, during his WWE return, Meanie went radio silent, causing a major breakdown in communication and management while also damaging their friendship. But their relationship seemed to have been repaired according to Mike's appearance on the Creative Control Daily podcast eight years ago. Many on the outside blamed Mike for trying to push the product into a more risque and ultra-violent direction when the audience was clearly shying away from that type of wrestling by 2005. Jasmine St. Clair also squarely pointed the finger at Mike Hawes, accusing him of being in over his head and not knowing how to manage funds. But to be fair, he was trying to fix the damage done mostly by her. In the Blue Meanie, the founder of the company also only found out it was shutting down once it was announced online. He commented in a post on MySpace at the time that no one had reached out to him for months, and that he wasn't surprised considering how much was done without his knowledge the entire time the promotion existed. Meanie has been very open in shoot interviews since that running 3PW did a number on his mental health. The drama within the company brought to light lies that led to the end of his relationship with Jasmine. The stress and politics of wrestling strained many of his friendships that took years to repair. Thankfully, now Meanie has moved past this dark time and has been able to continue entertaining us nearly 20 years later. In 2007, Force Entertainment repackaged and distributed 3PW shows in retail stores throughout Australia. You can also find 3PW DVDs and shows all over the internet. I suggest tracking them down, there's a lot of good stuff there. For all of its behind the scenes problems, 3PW offered a lot to the independent scene at the time. They were a place that gave many wrestlers, both old and new, a career boost, and most importantly provided some great memories and matches for the fans. Were you a fan of 3PW back in the day, or is this the first you're hearing about them? Let me know in the comments, along with any other defunct promotions you'd like to see me cover in the future. I'm Scott from WrestleSpective, thanks for watching.